the trumpet man. I returned to the ruins of the ancient house. The oracle was standing beside one of the pillars. I approached him. Look at that, he said, gazing up at one of the ornamental curves on its capital. It almost looks like a ram's horn. You shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. The trumpet, the ram's horn, lies at the center of the mystery. Without it, there's no return and no restoration. Without it, there's no Jubilee. In fact, the Hebrew word for Jubilee is Yovel. And Yovel, or Jubilee, literally means the trumpet or ram's horn. For the jubilee to come, the trumpet must be sounded. And it was actually sounded, I said, in the jubilee of 1967, at the moment of Jerusalem's return. Yes, by Rabbi Gorin, he said. It was the central act of that jubilee, and he was its central figure, its embodiment. But what about the following Jubilee? What was its central act? The Jerusalem Declaration. And who was its central figure? It would have to be the President. In your vision of the boy and the angel, the boy represented the President. And the race up the hill was the race for the Presidency. In each of your visions of the two angels and the boy, the boy represented the central figure of that jubilee. Do you remember the mystery of the rabbi's name? Yes, Gorin. It means threshing floor. And the central ground of that jubilee was the threshing floor, the temple mount. But the name Gorin was of European origin and in its original European context, it held a different meaning. And yet, in Hebrew, the language of the land in which the Jubilee event took place, it meant threshing floor. So what about the central figure in the next Jubilee? Is it possible that his name also holds a mystery? Trump, in his ancestors' native language, the name has been taken to mean drum. But in English, the language of America, where the Jubilee event would take place, the name holds another meaning. What? He who sounds the trumpet. The Jubilee, I said. Trump was the one who made the declaration, who sounded it. It was Trump who sounded the trumpet in that year of Jubilee. You shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. So the central figure in the Jubilee of 2017 was Trump, which means he who sounds the trumpet. And the central figure of the Jubilee of 1967 was he who sounded the shofar, the ram's horn which is also a trumpet. And the president's name, said the oracle, holds another meaning, similar but slightly different. The word trump refers not only to the one who sounds the trumpet, but to the trumpet itself. In the King James Bible, the last trumpet is called the last trump. And when speaking of the Messiah's second coming, it prophesies that it will come about with the trump of God. Trump means trumpet. What's the word in the original language that the word trump stands for? Trump is the biblical translation of the Greek word salpinx. When the Jubilean ordinance in Leviticus was translated into Greek, the word salpinx referred to the shofar, the ram's horn, the trumpet of Jubilee. In other words, in the year of Jubilee, you shall sound the shofar, the salpinx, the trump. So in which year does the trump sound? In the 50th year, I replied, the year of Jubilee. 
and the 50th year was 2017. And the year of Jubilee must be the year of the Trump. The year must be marked by it. And so, 2017 was the year of the Trump. It was the year specially marked by the Trump, the year he came to power. In the Jubilee, the Trump sounds. So in the year 2017, the Trump sounded. And the law of Jubilees specifically commands that the trumpet shall sound throughout all your land. So the trump sounded throughout the land. And what kind of sound does it make? The sound of the shofar is loud and jarring. And so the sound of the trump was loud and jarring. Think about it, he said. In the year of Jubilee, the trump leads all things. So in the year of Jubilee, America's leader and the world's most prominent leader was named Trump. In the year of Jubilee, the Trump must lead. And the Jubilee event of 2017 would begin in America. So in the year of Jubilee, Trump led America. Yes. And when does the Trump begin to sound? At the beginning of the Jubilee year. The presidential election took place at the end of 2016. So Trump was given the platform of the presidency to sound in January of 2017 at the beginning of the Jubilee year. The ancient law ordains you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. So America had caused the Trump to sound in the year of Jubilee. It's almost a play on words. Such things are used in the scriptures, and the names people are given often reveal the purpose for which they were born and appointed. The president was appointed to be a trumpet to sound in the year of Jubilee. A most unlikely instrument, I said, and he had no idea. So in your vision said the oracle. The angel told the boy that the trumpet doesn't need to know it was appointed to sound, that it wasn't about the vessel, but the one who sounded it. It's not even about what the vessel does before or after its appointed time of sounding. And so it only matters that the trump sounds at the appointed time. And the appointed time was 2017. More specific than that, he said. Do you remember what the United States Senate did in the middle of that year? The Jubilee and Resolution. They passed a resolution recognizing the 50th year and the return of the original owner, Israel, to the ancestral possession, and that, as in the Jubilee, official sanction be given to that return. But according to the law of Jubilees, for that to happen, the trumpet must sound. So on the exact date that marked the Jubilee, 50 years to the day the Six-Day War began, the Senate called for the President to recognize the right of the Jewish people to their ancestral possession, Jerusalem. They called for the trump to sound. For when the trump sounds in the year of Jubilee, the original owners receive the right to their ancestral possession. So the trump sounded in 2017, the year of Jubilee, and the original owners, the Jewish people, received the right to their ancestral possession, Jerusalem. Amazing. Shall I tell you another mystery? Ask the oracle, please. Do you believe that God weaves together every event with every other event? I've come to believe in that, I replied. Donald Trump came into the world on June 14, 1946. It was a Friday, sealed with the setting of the sun, the Sabbath. 
so there was a portion of scripture appointed for the day of his birth. Yes. And was there anything in that portion that was significant? There was. Wah. What was it? It was the section of the Bible that focuses on the trumpet. So Trump was born on the day the scripture spoke of the Trump? Yes, said the oracle. And the scripture specifically speaks of how to produce the trumpet. How to produce the Trump, I said. So on the day when the appointed scripture spoke of producing the Trump, the Trump was produced. It wasn't that the scripture was appointed for that one sole event, but all events and words are woven together by the hand of God. So the scripture ordained the birth of the Trump on the day of the Trump's birth. And the appointed scripture went on to speak of the different times and ways the trumpet was to sound. It would sound to call the people, to summon its leaders, and to move the nation forward. And at any other times, it was to sound during the appointed and sacred times of God. One of those appointed and sacred times of God, I said, is the Jubilee. So on the day of Trump's birth, the appointed scriptures spoke of the Trump being made to sound at God's appointed times. Trump was born to sound at the appointed time, in the year of Jubilee, the very year he came to power and began sounding. Does it say anything else about the trumpet? Yes that it would also sound to call for God's help, for the nation's deliverance. It would sound the call to war. In fact, it was this very passage of Scripture, the ordinance of the trumpet, that led Rabbi Gorin to sound the shofar on the day of Jerusalem's liberation. So the Scripture of Trump's birth led to the central moment in the Jubilee of 1967. And that key moment was the moment Israel returned to Jerusalem. And Trump's key moment in the next Jubilee was connected to that same moment. Trump's declaration would be the sealing of that return and that moment. Yes, said the oracle. The sounding of the second trump would seal the sounding of the first. Speaking of Rabbi Gorin, I said, you told me that in Hebrew, his name meant threshing floor, but you never told me what his name meant in the original language. His family's original name was Gorinchik. So what does Gorinchik mean? Are you sure you're ready? Asked the oracle. Yes. Horn, Gorenchik means horn, horn, I replied. As in trumpet? Yes, as in ram's horn, shufar, trumpet, and trump. So the man who sounded the horn at the western wall was named Horn? I almost shouted, Yes, S Rabbi Horn? So the central figure in the Jubilee of 1967 was Rabbi Horn. And 50 years later, the central figure in the Jubilee of 2017 was President Trump. And in Biblical Hebrew, Horn and Trump are the same word, Shofar. So you shall cause the Shofar of Jubilee, the Horn of Jubilee, the Trump of Jubilee to sound. So one jubilee is ushered in by a rabbi named Horn and the other by a president named Trump. It's too much. Are you surprised? Said the oracle. Did you not think that God had a sense of humor? When I saw the oracle again, he would take me even deeper into the realm of appointed times and the mystery that lay behind the events of modern times. 
And how was it revealed to you? Through the waters of the Magi.